Ah, so dividends, let's talk about them. Um, dividends are a great way to build wealth over a long term, right? Um, investing in dividend paying stocks is a good way to, over a lifetime, start with 100 shares, end up with three or 400 or more if you do it right. Trading is a great way to lose a lot of money really quickly if you don't know what you're doing. So I wanna start you guys off on, on investing and investing in stocks that pay dividends. Um, you can find lots of great resources online, good dividend paying stocks, simply by going to the Google, best dividend paying stocks. You'll recognize a lot of the companies. You'll probably use a lot of those companies because the guys that pay dividends are good blue chip stocks. They've been around forever, they're reliable. Wall Street loves them, their dividends are pretty secure. 12 or 13% dividends are super fucking sketchy because the company is saying, we need to attract buyers, um, just give away tons of money. And it ends up, usually you'll buy into these companies, you go, wow, 13% dividend, and then they cut the dividend, the stock tanks, and you lose your money. So I don't want you investing in those companies. I want you investing in the blue chip stuff. Um, now the question is, should you invest in dividend reinvestment? It's called DRIP. You can see it at the top of the page right here, dividend reinvestment. It's called DRIP because it's an acronym. Um, you know, when you get a dividend, it comes in two ways. The first way is cash. They'll just dump the cash in your account. You'll go up to your history and statements. I don't know why this isn't working. Do you see that? It's not letting me go any higher. I'm trying to go up to the account, um, but it's not letting me go there. That's what you'll do though. You'll click on my account. It'll pull down to here, dividend reinvestment. Then you'll hit enroll and edit. Um, I can't click on it. I mean, I can, but I'm not gonna because then you'll see every stock I have and I don't want you buying what I bought and then yelling at me on the internet going, I saw on your thing. So when you click on enroll, it's gonna show you every stock you own. You don't have to reinvest dividends in every one. You can pick and choose. Um, in other words, if you have stock in one company that pays a really good dividend and you need that cash, you need that money four times a year to say, cover an expense or maybe go on a, a vacation, um, you can take that cash. You don't have to reinvest it. But when you do use dividend reinvestment, Ameritrade doesn't charge you. They'll buy, um, they'll buy say, say you get a $100 dividend and you say reinvest that $100 back into my stock. Um, They'll give they'll they'll do it for free. They won't charge you six ninety five to buy those extra um, shares in a company. Uh, the next thing I want and and so you have the option of picking and choosing which ones you want. You also have the option of saying I'm going to let it all pile up in cash and at the end of the year I'll pick and choose where I want to reinvest. But if you don't have the time, I know you. You're busy. You're driving to work every morning. You hate your boss. You hate your job. The last thing you want is to be worrying about this other stuff. The best thing to do is just go up to my account, which it's not letting me click on, go on my account, click on dividend reinvestment, hit enroll, edit, and just go through and add everyone to dividend reinvestment. The next thing you'll want to do, which I also can't show you because it's being very weird. I don't know why it's not letting me go any higher, but if you go to my account, uh, you'll see history and statements. Four times a year, you get dividends. You can click on history and statements to see what you got. Now, um, because I can't go up, I'm just gonna use Procter & Gamble as an example. I wanna show you um, how you can find out whether the company pays a dividend or not and how much it pays. So Procter & Gamble here, you see annual dividend yield. It pays 298 per share per year, okay? So you have 100 shares, you've invested $11,000 in Procter & Gamble, that's a lot, and you're getting $298, right? A dollar per share, you have 100 shares, you're getting just under $3 per, um, per share. So 100 shares means you get $298. And then if you reinvest that back into the stock, you're not ending up with a whole lot. So this stock isn't a great dividend it only pays 2.5%. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is the X dividend date. This guy right here means you need to own the stock by on or by this date to qualify for the dividend. So let's say it's July 1st because they're saying their X dividend is the 18th, which means it's already been paid. Um, but let's say we uh, are looking at Procter & Gamble and we wanna buy this dividend paying stock. 
and it's July 1st. I'm looking at this going, all right, I need to have my money ready to buy Procter & Gamble on or before the 18th in order to qualify for the dividend. You miss that date, you miss the dividend, you got to wait a whole four months for the next quarter. That sucks. So make sure you always look at this date. Now, the next thing I want to show you is on the chart. On the chart, it will show you, hey, look, there's the dividend. It paid on, on, the, uh, on the date on July 18th. But when you go over the D, <laughs> um, it'll show you August 15th is the pay date. That's because the X dividend date, the date you have to own the stock by, isn't also the payout date. So on the 15th of, or on the 18th of July, you're not getting the dividend. You're getting it later. It's, you need to own it by the 18th of July in order to get it on August 15th. And you can see here is 75 cents. That's what you're getting. Um, so that's essentially the basics of dividend reinvesting. You probably should do it. And you probably should take any leftover money at the end of every um, at the end of every month and put it back into your dividend paying stocks. And you should try to own one um, one dividend paying stock in every major sector, right? Um, telecom, medical, uh, bio, tech. Tech doesn't usually pay dividends, but some of them do. And the reason tech companies don't pay dividends is because who really gives a shit about three or four percent when the company, uh, the stock is going up 30 percent in a year? You know, you're going to miss that three. Oh, well, they don't have three percent dividend. I'm not going to buy it. No, because you don't care about that three percent when the stock is going up 30 percent in a couple of months. Um, and that's tech. Tech is saying you, we don't need to worry about a couple of dollars dividend because you're going to get such massive growth from investing in us. So. Um, that's basically the long and short of dividend investing. It's important. You need to do it. It builds wealth over a long term, especially if you are not just relying on dividend reinvestment, but also adding to the position. Anytime you've got leftover money, it doesn't matter if you're buying at the highs or the lows. It's called dollar cost averaging. And you want to just throw a little bit of money every once in a while back in your dividend paying stocks uh, just to... Um, build up a larger and larger position. The more money you have invested in a stock, the more money you'll make from dividends, the more shares you'll get in exchange, the more dividends you'll get later. That's how it works. Have a good night.